the inadequate personal protective equipment PPE have predisposed fire personnel to a myriad of occupational hazards. Only one out of six fire personnel can have a personal protective equipment for operations. These notwithstanding, the Ghana National Fire Service cannot boast of a hydraulic platform for firefighting in high-rise buildings. In an interview with GBC24, the Chief Fire Officer, Dr. Albert Brown Gazy, said the number of attend table fire tenders, which stands at four nationwide, can only fight a fire up to the sixth floor of high rise buildings, a report by Sarah Fori. Placing the Ghana National Fire Service under scrutiny 53 years after its establishment, it is evident that the service has made a lot of progress. Way back, volunteers were mobilized to fight fires, but can now boast of 7,000 personnel. The service can also be found in all 10 regional capitals and 188 districts nationwide, out of which 149 have fire stations. However, in total, it has 176 fire stations, a training school and a clinic. The incidence of fires have reduced by 60% due to intensified public education, but the safety of personnel engaged in firefighting is most often compromised on. When we talk of the hazards, we are talking about injury as part of it, inhalation of toxic fumes as part of it. We are also looking at the situation where in course of response, you can even be moving an accident. So it cuts across board that emergency management requires that we address these hazards to ensure the safety of the personnel. It is not the fire that kills at times, but it's the smoke. The carbon monoxide, that kills. You know, the smoke kills in seconds. Electrical fires is one of the hazards. When the fireman is to fight fire involving electricals, it is when the electrical is de-energized you switch off the electricity, then you can treat it as Class A fire. When I talk of Class A fire, I'm talking of solid fuel fire. When you are able to isolate energy, that is where you have access to fire fire. Because you cannot fire fire when the energy is on. The service also needs some essential equipment, a number of which have outlived their purpose. And we need a lot of pneumatic cutters, you know, what we call... Um, insulation cutters, fireman access with insulation that can withstand even 20,000 volts. The other aspect that we also have to talk about is the PPE, personal protective equipment, availability of personal protective equipment. I will confidently say that the ratio of PPE for firemen is not that much. Um, the ratio for a PPE each is about one to six. And that is one area that we are confronted with. We would request for the hydraulic platforms. These are vehicles that are used for high-rise firefighting. Now, we don't use 10 table ladder again, because 10 table ladder can get to six or seven floors. But we need hydraulic platforms that can go to even 20th floor. Legislative Instruments 1724 empowers the Chief Fire Officer, Dr. Brown Gazy, to close down institutions and premises which fail to adhere to fire safety standards. However, the Chief Fire Officer says that might not have to be the case if regulatory authorities do their work before issuing out permits to curb the springing up of myriads of illegal structures. Dr. Brown Gazy explained what accounts for the delay in releasing reports of the causes of fires. If there is a fire, it involves a property, and the property is insured, you cannot release a report of that property without the consent of the owner. Insurance company may be involved. Once you make it public, you have made what I would tell contemporaneous information out without due cognizance. For the purpose of classified information, we need to make sure that due processes are followed. You must look at principles, practices, and processes.
before final due diligence is done. For instance, you look at a situation where you will preliminarily come out with a report. Ultimately, the circumstantial evidences may change. Do you get back to the public and tell them that my initial report was not right? So this is the actual report? The use and management of water hydrants in recent times have also been a subject for controversy. People go around and if you fire hydrants, they tamper with them, they, they, they damage them because they want water. You go to other countries, 100 feet away, you cannot stand by a hydrant. You don't even tamper with hydrant. Fire service, we use, we are users of the hydrant. We don't maintain a hydrant. Water company is 1% from every Ghanaian for firefighting. It's on, it's on, on, it's on, the, on the bill. They have the responsibility of maintaining hydrants. The Ghana National Fire Service is ranked the second in road traffic accidents extrication after South Africa. In restructuring the service, specialized recruitment is ongoing to boost its ability to offer advice to contractors on fire safety management. I'm also looking at getting some forensic scientists to support us in the area of fire investigation. It's also another question that we are looking at. All fires that occur must be investigated. And I am looking at the possibility of getting the setup of a laboratory for the fire service, forensic laboratory for the fire service. The Ghana National Fire Service hopes to construct a modern fire academy at Dioya Nkwanta in the Bunahafu region while still in talks with the Ghana Education Service to introduce fire safety education in the junior and senior high schools curricula. Zero for GBC 24, Accra.